so ready. What is up, baby? It's out of talking sports. Yeah. We have a special guest on. You guys Woo. loved him so much Yo. last week, so we had to bring him back this week. None yeah. other than Carson Harris. Sound the applause. Let's go. He's uh, Howdy, currently thank you for having me back. Oh, okay. Go ahead, man. Um, yeah, voice. sorry to kill your intro. Yeah. It was rambling on too long. Piece of thank shit. Thank you for having me back. As always, the knowledge is going up, and you're going to be more well-informed on the other side. So let's right. kick it off, baby. All right. Well, just before we start, this is 12-man PPR league. Uh, leave a comment on any trades you want to stay in lives. We'll answer them all. But, yeah, Carson, get right into it, baby. Give Come on, your, Carson. Uh, tell us now. Give us your, yeah, give well, us your people I'm, you hate. I'm a little nervous now. I wasn't really ready for first. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and start with the Dukies, little Browns in Cleveland. Uh, that's not Ooh, bad. But, um, yeah, so Amari Cooper – Get him out of here. You know, this was DTR's first game starting. I know it was against Pittsburgh. Yeah. And you look at it from the other side of the coin, like, okay, well, 7.4 points, like not too bad. For me, Amari's already kind of had a topsy-turvy season alone. And that's because of the quarterback carousel going on over there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's probably some people, some Browns fans, that wouldn't mind scooping him off. Uh-huh. They know what he can be. Um, and for me, that's a perfect reason to trade away. Uh, maybe get a more solid receiver in return um, and a running back, whatever you need. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would get him off your roster. Obviously, everyone has him. He's 95% rostered. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Amari Cooper's a Cleveland steamer, but, I mean, who are you going to get him for? That's my question. Is It's not like you're saying. I mean, it, it's also yeah. someone similar who we're going to tell later in this podcast. So just stay tuned. <laughs> we'll try to figure out how – like what, what kind of people you think we can try to maneuver possibly to – uh, pick up someone with Amari because I'm assuming yeah. if you're trying to give Amari up, are you trying to are you trying to get a wide receiver? Or are you trying to do the little like alternate for RB? Because usually if you do wide receiver for RB, you got to overpay on your wide receiver uh, to get yeah. the lesser RB. So I'm assuming you're going wide receiver, correct? Yeah, I mean I I would go wide receiver. Um, you know it all depends. I, so for me, and this goes off of the trade four. I think it's a great candidate to trade for Calvin Ridley. Um, right around the same mark, WR27 versus 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else could you do? You could do – you could even you could even do Nico Collins because I actually trust him way more. That's pass-happy offense. And like I said, mm-hmm. any Texans wide receiver – well, I said trade away, but any Texans wide receiver can technically have a good yeah. floor. Um, yeah. Yeah, really any of those. I mean, there's, there's other cheeky ones too, like Cortland Sutton. Doesn't have as much of a ceiling, has a better floor. I think there is options within that like WR two um, top tier, but more mid tier area. Yeah. Um, as think, far as think... running back, I mean, it depends on your team's rostered, but I wouldn't be trading for running backs at this point unless I'm assuming you at least got you know two solid yeah. ones or one solid one and a decent backup. It's it's wide receiver centric. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, give me your next one, baby. Come on. Yeah. So my next one, and it. It pains me to say this being a Chargers fan, but uh, uh-huh. yeah, Austin Eckler, man. I think we all <laughs> saw that video of him running incredibly slow. Looked like his legs were running through mud. He's stumping on grapes. I don't know what's going on. He's got to have like an injury or like his girl is like beating him at home. I don't know what's happening. I think both. It's got to be both. Pro- probably both, yeah. And they're not good grapes that he's turning. It's an injury um, from the girl beating him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. He probably <laughs> yeah. lost one of his toes. He's down a digit. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I'd trade him away. I mean, he, he, yes, he does technically have a floor, but just in general, too, he just hasn't lived up to his name at all. For instance, I had a league with him and Kamara, and I traded away Kamara thinking Echo would be the better option, and boy, was I wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, seven points against Green Bay, who's just not the best defense. Jair was out again. Uh, which just helps like open up more of the run game because he can pass Keen whenever you want, whatever you want to call yeah. it. He's just, I don't know. I mean, again, you can look at it from the other side of the coin, like, oh, okay, he's low. He had 20, 20, 20, and then now seven. I just, it, with Baltimore coming up, Denver's playing better defense week 14. And then Dem- I don't like it. I don't like where he's at. I don't like his projected schedule the remaining uh, weeks. And, uh, you know, again, mm-hmm. someone's going to see him as high value and you're able to get a better return for him. Uh, and as far as return, I mean, I'm going name brand. So it's going for for shooting for the fences. Either, again, straight swap for a top tier running back or uh, maybe like a wide receiver or two. Yeah, I think that definitely could work, especially Eckler being such a name brand. You know, someone else might be able to see him and think, 
hey, it's Austin Eckler. He's a uh, he's been good before. Why maybe he's good going to be good again? <laughs> but in reality, he's just terrible. Um, oh, right. So okay. that could be uh, something you could target. If y'all watch, if y'all watch the trade four segment, you know I was high on Eckler, and I'm trying to find <laughs> candidates. I'm trying to find managers like these two guys because strictly. <laughs> Playoff schedule. Let's get it rolling. And these people who have Eckler are pissed off. They didn't have him for X amount of time. He hasn't been putting up what he does. But guess what? We know he's a pass catcher. We know he can do it. I guarantee you that matchup this past week against Green Bay has made all the managers want to throw up because Green Bay sucks against the run this year. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We don't get Eckler for the run. We get him for pass catching. That is why we get him. We don't get him because he's an explosive back. We get him because he's a pass catcher. And guess what? He has one of the best matchups in the playoffs. Fine managers like this. But I do see your point of view because Baltimore is not a fun matchup. And people are probably, if they have Eckler, they're in situations where they're trying to make it in the playoffs. Yeah. And, you know, finish off, technically, the Chargers and Baltimore don't play often. But being a fan, uh, they're actually 2-0 in the last two matches. So, I am optimistic <laughs> they'll win the game, especially being desperate. But that's another point. My final person is... Yeah. The lovely Devontae Adams just wants to be reunited with A-Rod. Hey, um, hey, his, targets have, his targets have been there, yeah. right? He's got 13 in back-to-back weeks. Um, a tidy this past week to put him up over 20. But uh-huh. as a whole, this this what happens. You get your new coach coming in. They're all rah-rah, right, around, their, um, around Pierce, the coach. Yeah. Um, he's going to go into KC. He's going to have a dud game against a good defense. Then he's on bye yeah. week. And he'll, he'll have some soft matchups. Don't get me wrong. Like Indianapolis week 17. He's got KC again, though. And he's got Chargers, which, I yeah, you would assume he does well. But I, as a fan, I don't think he does. But uh, regardless, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think he's going to go in. He's going to put up some stinkers here and there. And he's not going to be consistent enough for, again, name brand for where he's at. Um, so I think he's a perfect trade away candidate. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the rest of their schedule, um, you have the roller coaster ride that is Aiden O'Connell. And yeah. I mean, you just don't know how a rookie QB is going to fare when it comes to later in the season when these games start getting tight and you need a win. Oh, they're going to be real tight. Oh, yeah. A little tight. Huh? But, uh, <laughs> a little sad, huh? Gosh, I don't know if I should say that with my girlfriend here, but. Dude, um, hey, anything flies, huh? Bro, you oh, just yeah. said you had a girlfriend out here? Dude, all the girls that watch our podcast are pissed yeah. off now. Holy fuck. You just expose bro. yourself, bro. It's oh, just him, I swear. Shit, it's just him. Dude. It's just him. You were just DMing one last week on here, bro. What the hell? All right. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, if you can hear me. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Keep, uh, I agree with you. I think uh, Adams is a great one because this is something that we're going to continue to talk about in this trade away segment. Week 13 is a looming. Devontae Adams is a key target who's going to be gone in week 13. A lot of fantasy managers might not know that yet. They might not know about this fucking beast that's sitting in week 13. He's a great one to get off. It's not that we don't trust Tay. We just don't trust Mr. Aiden O'Connell. Yep. All right, Pauline, give me yours. Oh, you want me to give it to you now? Yeah. Talk you give to it to me hot and give it to me sticky. Give it to me sticky. Oh, I'm going to do it sticky. Now I'm going to get my boy Tony P, who's been absolutely – Sticking to the one yard line, and he finally made it in to the end zone. He finally made it into the end zone. Holy shit! It took the Carolina Panthers. That's the type of team it took for him to get 18 points. Mm-hmm. Realize that, and realize too his matchups coming ahead. I know he's got a little Minnesota coming up, and he's got some other easy matchups coming up. But in the playoffs, I believe he plays Philly. We don't want that. Uh, yucky. I'm trying to trade away currently right now. Tony Pollard, and we were recording this on a Monday night. Right now, my candidate I'm thinking is that. DeAndre Swift is going to have a bad night against Kansas City. I think it's going to be more of a pass-happy situation. Kansas City's line's going to hold up, and Jalen's probably going to snipe a touchdown or something. So I'm personally thinking that I might try to move Pollard for Swift this upcoming week if Swift has a bad game. Like I said, that is all tonight, so I'm not sure exactly how that will end up paying out. But definitely trying to move Pollard for somebody just because it's been atrocious, and we've seen with this team that – they just haven't really been going to him. And they, I mean, they do go to him sometimes in the end zone, but he just doesn't go in. He doesn't. And if you watch that run, it's kind of crazy. Like, he, like, busted through, like, ten different people just to get there. I don't know how many more times that's happening. And, yeah. 
Yeah, it took yeah. a miracle for the Make a Wish kid to get in the end zone, and yeah. uh, you know it's, it's a yeah. shame because you have all these no name white tight end backups getting tutties, maybe some seeds <laughs> yeah. sprinkled in. And Tony yeah. Pollard's the odd man out, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he got his wish. He's not going to get one for the next couple weeks. Um, <laughs> get his ass off your team. Yeah, I mean, uh, completely agree. What do you think, Scotty? Yeah, I could. I again, I'll just third what everyone said here. Um, hey, it's okay. not looking good for Tony Pollard. He put hey. up his best, arguably one of his best games of the year against one of the worst teams of the year. And it took the worst team of the year to put up his best game of the year. Yeah. Um, so I think, uh, moving forward here, try to sell Tony Pollard while yeah. you can, while he has some sort of value because yeah, three, four weeks in a row, five weeks in a row, he hasn't had any value. Now mm -hmm. this is the first week you're getting value from him. So try mm -hmm. to get, Try to trade him away for someone that's at least halfway decent. Yeah, just tell him about the schedule too. It should be really good. Um, my next person I'm going to go to is Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall, I'm strictly trading him just because the Jets are stinky, stinky poo-poo. I don't want stinky, stinky poo-poo on my team <laughs> early right now. So what I'm going to do is – I'm going to send Brees Hall out because he got 18-plus this week. He found a way to end, so thank God, somehow. Didn't even think the Jets were going to score this week, but they did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, who's Brees Hall? And everyone's going to be like, holy shit, Brees Hall? It's, it's such a juicy name brand. I just want him so bad. I want him to get on my team. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to fucking get the short end of the stick, and you're going to get someone in return who has a good playoff schedule. Guess what? You think people could do Brees Hall for Austin Eckler right now? Because I would do that. I would take it. Yeah, I think you could Austin make an argument. Right I don't know if I take that to be honest, but you I mean, it, you'd have to be I, a... get Eckler, I get Eckler, and they get Bruce Hall. I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you just said trade away. I'm saying not for Bruce Hall. I would not yeah. get Eckler for Bruce Hall. You cannot get Eckler for Bruce Hall. I wouldn't do that. He's no, saying I'm saying, do it. I'm saying you have – I'm saying I have Brees Hall. You have Eckler. I give you Eckler. You get Brees Hall. Okay, yeah, I would take that. That's what I'm saying. That's okay, the trade yes, I would yes. do. I would do right, that. Sorry. I was not yeah. computing. <laughs> yeah. Not you got computing. so used to that little monotone action that I gave you there. You know, but, uh, there. yeah. <laughs> what do you all think? Brees Hall. Um, man, that's – yeah, it's tricky. Just tell uh, me I'm stupid. I'm Just seeing tell me I'm with – <laughs> no, no. I mean, with everything I've uh, uh, been going with this season and not going against the grain, yeah, he's he's trade away material. Um, you know, they're going through a weird phase on offense. Obviously, Bro, receiving corps had nine yards phase. receiving. Like it's just there's not a lot to trust. And again, with any dumpster fire avoid. Yeah, I, I can't go against my morals. It's so off. weird seeing a bright spot on a dumpster fire because he's like the one exception this season where there is a bright spot in a dumpster fire. And yeah. That's pretty tall, so. Yeah. Him and Wilson, man. And, and you know, they hit their lowest of lows past week. So, you know, are they better bounce up that much higher afterwards? Not really. Um, because we don't know who's going to be at QB. <laughs> and if it's yeah. Zach again, you're just like, okay, well. You got a motherfucker who's tripping over his feet walking backwards. I, I'm out on that team so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, but like I said, a lot of people think the same way. They're like, I think Brees Hall's been the one shining star in this, like, absolutely epitome of a team. And um, I just – I want to get I want to get a situation where my team's going to be scoring more. And I think – like, that's why I said Eckler, because I think the Chargers are going to be scoring more. What happens with them, I don't know. Yeah. But personally, right now, head-to-head, -head, I think Brees Hall is better than Eckler, but it's just situation. That's the only reason why I mentioned that. The last guy I'm going to say is Mr. Singletary. And this is just because – Pierce is going to mm -hmm. come back, and I'm not saying Pierce is this big, bad guy. I'm saying that it's going to be 50-50 enough to where his value is not going to really matter. Singletary has been good just by himself, but he is not by himself. So with Mr. Pierce coming back with Singletary, his value plummets, and I think you could trade away Singletary in a pass-happy offense. That's an interesting one. I don't know – I got, I'd have to pull up Singletary's numbers here because uh, I think that'll determine. Why don't you go ahead and pull it up, huh? Yeah, I got Pierce right it's, here. It's straight, it's straight, okay, but his numbers with Pierce in and with Pierce out because currently Pierce has been gone for like, what, like two or three weeks? Yeah. So, yeah, he weeks. hasn't played since week eight at Carolina, yeah. But Pierce hasn't been able to do what Singletary's done in these past two games. Now, I know he's put up – looks like he's put up 23 and 20, which is really good for a Houston running back, but – 
Pierce hasn't been able to do what Singletary's done these past couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think Pierce is going to be the lead guy. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, he's going to, like, overtake him. I think he's going to have just enough of the carries to where Singletary's not going to be a bad Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. And I think Singletary definitely took advantage of the opportunity, had some weak run defense to go against. Um, yeah, I mean, just having that – like, you have Singletary running 30 – and 22 carries. So 52 carries over two games. Like, what does he think he has? Derrick Henry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Damian Pierce is coming back, and he's going to take away some carries from him. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, Singletary could be the lead guy going forward, but, I mean. I he know, could. I, I don't know. But uh, that's my that's my baby. So right. uh, let's, yeah, let's get into it. Let's round this thing out with the uh, – we're, we're saving the best for last here, boys. Oh, yeah, please tell me what it is. Oh. All right. Here we got We got our number one is Saquon Barkley. Now, he had 91% wow. of the snap share this past game, and he is the Giants' entire offense. He is the giant in the Giants. Yeah. He, uh, he's got Tommy DeVito behind him. Who the hell is Tommy DeVito? We don't know. But the guy beats the Commanders. Had, yeah, he had the best game against the weakest opponent on the schedule. And to round out the schedule, he's got New England, Green Bay, New Orleans, and Philadelphia. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty yeah. tough against the run. As far as defenses go, I mean, you saw Eckler, what he did against Green Bay this week. He put up like seven or whatever it was. So that scares me for Saquon. I think he, you also have to worry about if he's getting 91% of the snap share, you also have to worry about his risk for injury. And we all know Saquon Barkley has been at risk for injury his entire oh, career. Yeah. So I would try to get off Saquon as quickly as possible. What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, schedules, icky, icky, yuck, yuck. And at this point of the season, we're looking for good schedules. And looking for good people. And he's also another candidate that falls short of the week 13 bye. You're not going to have him for week 13. And I mm -hmm. guarantee you that probably majority of you are going to be worried about bye week on week 13. Only a certain amount of people are going to be resting their players and chilling, really. I mean, majority of us are going to try to find a spot, trying to upgrade a spot, whatever. Barkley's not going to help you. And that's some, another reason why you get him out. Yeah, yeah, biggest thing for me is, uh, you know, the best ability is availability. And you don't know if Saquon's going to be there. He has one of the worst track records, him and OBJ. So, yeah, yeah, I'd go ahead and dump him on a high. And you can definitely get something in return for him. People love him still. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, especially sure. seeing him. What was he, the Giants' number one wide receiver this week? Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. He was their whole oh, yeah. team. He was yeah, their whole he team. Was. Yep. He, he was. But, uh, yeah. all right, moving on here. We have Jamar Chase. Now, I own Jamar Chase in one of my leagues, and uh, I know that sounds really bad, but it's not how it sounds. I own him, and in the first month of the year, he was WR27. And if you can get WR1 value for Chase this last week, especially especially with the news of Joe Burrow going down, I mean, who's their backup? It was some just no-name guy that I've never even heard of that just came out of nowhere. Yeah, it's um, Joe Flacco. Browning. He played in Washington. They were talking yeah. ranked with him there. But, I thought right, it was right. Joe Flacco. <laughs> no, that's the Browns. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Browns now for some reason. They got him. But, um, I mean, it's just – I I don't know if I'd trade Jamar Chase. I'd maybe throw out some trades, see what, see what the market's like, see what you could get for him. Yeah. And he could potentially be a WR1 for WR1 slot. Maybe someone's held up on the draft stock of him and you don't want to trade him, which I kind of am. I had the third overall pick and I took him WR3. So I was pretty pissed off when uh, he didn't have a great year. But what do you boys think about Jamar Chase this year? Yeah, Carson, riddle, riddle me stuff. I'm trying to find a player. I'd, I'd yeah, say I mean, I, I think the biggest thing too is so it's interesting. I haven't really viewed him as – being top 10 this season, right? I mean, it's just been rough. Burrow took a little bit to get hot. He's position ranked seven, and a majority of that is inflated by a 52-point week in week five. Yeah. I, I don't even remember this shit. This is insane. Uh, yeah. 15 for 192, three touchdowns. But regardless, that's just not sustainable. Um, and uh, <laughs> the backup quarterback, it makes a difference. You know, he's not – He's probably going to feed your tight ends on the Bengals more. He's going to feed these little choppy mm -hmm. short slot receivers. Chase will obviously get the ball. They'll give him some. But as far as true WR1 status, he now is probably like fringe low in WR1, but really top of the WR2. Yeah. Ceiling's really low. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough trying to find someone to trade for him. But, I mean, I'm, with me looking at people for possibly – 
sending for him? I mean, do you think someone would do a DJ Moore for Chase? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was, I honestly, I was thinking like Chase for Diggs. Oh, really? I think they you both, think you could get a Diggs? Well, I think they've both been iffy, and I don't, I don't really see either. Especially Diggs. Diggs in the last three weeks has been out caught by King K, and he has damn near no yards. So I think I personally like Diggs long term, obviously more than Chase. So as long as you can maybe sell someone a dream, I know it's such a tricky one. Um, maybe the, the bye week Diggs, coming up too. That's the thing. The only thing with Diggs, he's got that 13, that week 13 bye, man. That's fine. If you're a team that can afford that, um, and because what, you're probably not even expecting much from Chase anyway, then it's definitely a risk yeah. you want to take. Yep. That's but true. I'm, saying, I'm thinking the people who drafted Chase are probably not top of their leaderboard. Probably. Oh, that's not. fair. I actually know a couple in <laughs> there now. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good so, point. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm curious. Maybe I take the value more. So, I mean, so it, it, it really going to depend on who you're talking to. Cause yeah, I'm thinking, I was thinking more of like Pittman. I was thinking more of like, um, I was thinking like Pittman. Okay. I was thinking of people who are a lot lower end, but have a chance to be a little bit better coming up and just play off schedule. But, um, but like, I mean, you had these two guys thinking about like digs and stuff. So that just means you need to go talk to people in your league and figure out what is his value because yeah. that's going to really determine what's going to actually happen. Yeah, but even if you get low, out. Yeah. yeah, even if you get low in that name brand, I mean, you still have solid options. Like, yeah. let's say you get a Puka Nakua, Thielen, and Evans. I mean, yeah, that it's it's limitless in terms of your options. So for sure, yeah, I, I right. think it's a great trade away. Moving yeah. on here, we we're gonna stick on the Bengals theme, and that's Joe Mixon. Um, obviously, we just said Joe Burrow went out for this season, and you hate selling, you know, Joe Mixon low. Yeah, but I mean, he put up 21 points last week, so that's a decent showing. But I mean, if you look at it, catching out of the backfield, um, Mixon had two targets last week, and Trent Irwin had 41 percent of the target share when Joe Burrow went out, which yeah. Lamar Chase having 24 percent. So it's not like Joe Mixon's really getting targets out of the back backfield. He's going to be really touchdown dependent, and yeah. every time I watch Joe Mixon, he's had really start trouble getting in from the like inside the five. That's not really his strong suit. They've yeah. always had the pass. That's always been Joe Burrow, you know, um, a tight end strong suit there. And yeah. not to mention, they have to play Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Minnesota, followed by Pittsburgh again, and then the Chiefs in the fantasy uh, football championship. So yeah. that's a rough, tough schedule for a running back. And I know running backs are extremely hard to come by this year. So maybe someone sees the 21 points he put up last week and they think, hey, you know, I'm slim at the running back position. Maybe yeah. you could get a wide receiver and maybe a lesser tier running back for Joe Mixon. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, something you'd have to feel in your own league. But I think Joe Mixon is one hundred percent a sell here. Yeah, I mean that's for sure. I mean someone's going to think he's QB proof with twenty one points after Joe Burrow went out like early, early first. So mm-hmm. I mean that's definitely a good move. I think that's the case. Unfortunately, I was saying trade uh, for Mixon a couple of weeks ago just because Joe Burrow was turning the corner. And I thought this team was going to. Really yeah. do good, but like you said, he's not. He's probably not going to catch passes. This is going to be a very ugly offense going ahead. They're in one of the hardest divisions with really good defenses. Yeah. They're going to have to play them more. It's just not really looking good for the Bengals. And to be honest, I want to sit in my corner and listen to Marvin's room while I have all these Bengals people on my roster. So, <laughs> versus. Hey, Carson yeah, that's why you should never stack, bud. Joe, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Him. I'll give you a. I'll give you my draft strategy for next year, so you can come join me at the top. Um, auto draft <laughs> yeah yeah well that's the best strategy right uh yeah. preseason rank number one but um yeah with Mixon, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh you know he's had almost half his game so four to ten games uh <laughs> sub four yards to carry yeah. and if you want to look at it too when burrow was struggling they weren't winning either sure they were tough matchups but they also have a tough schedule like ryan, ryan said he has 10 13 14 so in terms of again supposed to be a fringe uh rb1 low tier He's just not there. Um, and, yeah, you can get great value for him because um, he's still technically got a solid out in the past four weeks. But it's just a matter of can you sell the dream. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that was uh, out-of-pocket sports. Let's wrap this thing up. Any closing thoughts, fellas? Uh, yeah, I was bricked watching you this whole time. I don't know. I, just, I like, was I second that. that. Um, it was a little uncontrollable. <laughs> Carson was a- the reason why we took so long was Carson was bricked up doing some things before Dude, the podcast. Yeah, he had to put yeah. that. He had to put that damn dagger away, man. He, ever since just he was the way y'all silky voices are, you know what I mean? 
Um, I will say, uh, game hasn't started <laughs> there yet. The camera. Oh, yeah. dude, let's get the fuck out of here. Fuck this kid, huh? <laughs> <laughs>